the board will come to order. Item two, Pledge of Allegiance. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Quorum call. Director Anderson. Excused. Director Atkinson. Excused. Director Kreutz. Here. Director Dakotas. Here. Director Heath. Here. Director Marian. Here. Director Moses. Here. Director Sargent. Here. Director Silvestri. Here. Director Welch. Here. Direct, uh, Chairman Carlo. Present. Ms. Rulliard. Excused. Ms. Scott. Excused. Ms. Bergoli. Here. We have nine members present to excused nine members present two members excused a quorum is present item four acceptance of the agenda the chair recognizes director kreutz i move to accept the agenda as presented director kreutz moves to accept the agenda as presented is there a second director Sargent. any question is acceptance of the agenda is the board ready for the question director marine mr chair I'm, I'm not sure if this is in order or not but on the agenda under the facilities and finance that somehow uh, director Sylvester has been left off of that list We'll make that correction in the minutes. Thank you. Director Sargent. Hmm. Understood. We'll make that correction in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Pending questions, acceptance of the agenda. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails and the agenda is accepted as presented. Item five, moment of silence for Donald Fecto, a former MS-86 lead custodian uh, who sadly passed away on April 29th, 2023. Please join me in a moment of silence. Item six, public comment session. Pursuant to policy BEDH, a public comment session is scheduled during each regular meeting of the board for the purpose of allowing a fair and adequate opportunity for the public to be heard on matters related to MS-86 and for the board to obtain information relevant to the scope of its authority. Members of the public wishing to address the board will approach the podium at the time their name is called by the chair and prior to sharing their message, they will state their name and town of residence for the record. Each person addressing the board will have three minutes to speak, and when their time has expired, the chair will ask that they promptly conclude their statement. No complaints or allegations will be allowed at board meetings concerning any person employed by MS-86, nor shall complaints or allegations be made against any particular student or group of students. Expressions of approval or disapproval from members of the public are prohibited. The chair will exercise his authority to stop any presentation in violation of these rules, and the chair invites Jess Weber or Paulus to address the board. Jess Weber, I live in Hollis and I teach at the high school. I wanted to briefly address what happened at the May 1st meeting. A gentleman stomped his foot at me, got in my face and said, not a clown. This, I assume, was in reference to a previous speech where I had said, when these clowns start attacking teachers. That man provided a live action demonstration as to why teachers won't come to our board meetings, because we may face harassment and attempted intimidation. Not only might we be harassed in person, but librarians and teachers are being attacked online by extremists who have literally no shame in making up disgusting and vicious lies about educators. Because I oppose book banning, I have been the target of online attacks by people I've never met, and who use social media in an attempt to bully and intimidate those who disagree with them. I don't stand for bullies in my classroom, and I certainly won't be silenced by them as they attack the career that I have dedicated my life to. 
I was thinking about this book banning's minority attempt to spread fear and hate and mistrust in our edu educational system. Then I was thinking about how our schools are the hubs of our communities and how they bring our communities together in such amazing ways. Just in the month of May, we have hosted the Special Olympics and our drama club has put on the spring play Clue. Tonight is the National Honor Society induction ceremony and this Thursday we'll host a senior citizen dinner in the high school cafeteria. <coughs> This coming Sunday, we'll host the Bonnie Eagle Car Show to benefit our athletic programs, and next week will be a celebration of our music and art programs, showcasing our amazingly talented Bonnie Eagle students. Our schools bring together our community in such celebratory ways that help to negate the negativity that some are so desperate to spread. And when called upon, our community rallies together to support our students and our staff in awe-inspiring displays of unity. Bonnie Eagle does not want the division and the unrest that has been invited into our communities, and we reject the fear-mongering and intimidation that has been a plague for the past two years. We absolutely have issues that must be addressed, but nothing will be solved if we listen to and make decisions based upon lies spread by a hateful minority. I mentioned before that my classroom door is always open, and it most definitely is, but in addition to an invitation to my classroom, I'd like to issue each board member a new challenge. Shadow a student for a day. Attend their classes with them. Engage in the work we're asking them to do. Become a student again. How much fun would that be? Not only would it be fun, but I imagine it would be incredibly eye-opening as to the issues that 21st century students and teachers are dealing with on a daily basis. Spend a day talking to the people who your decisions most impact, the students and staff of our district. Perhaps you can make this a yearly board activity, like a field trip, and then you can use those experiences to guide your decision making and to serve as the reality you can hold up against the lies I'm sure you'll continue to hear at these meetings. Thank you, and as always, I look forward to seeing you at the high school. Thank you. The chair invites Amanda Lopes of Steep Falls to address the board. Hello, uh, my name is Amanda. I live in Steep Falls and I have two kids in the middle school. And what I've seen lately at board meetings has been a lot of animosity, a lot of negativity towards our teachers, staff and schools in general, brought on by district parents being led by outside influences. So today, I wanna to talk about the positive impacts that this district and these schools have brought to my kids, things that I've witnessed coming from the teachers, staff and the schools because they're really doing a great job. Um, my kids' entire schooling has been here. They started in Jumpstart, they went to Steep Falls Elementary, they went to Georgie Jack, they went to Edna Libby, Edna Libby, then Georgie Jack, and now with the middle school. With very few exceptions, I've been really happy as a parent with what I've experienced. And most importantly, my kids have been happy. This is about them, not me as the parent. They've thrived in this district. Our teachers are amazing people. They don't look at our kids as just students. They look at them as entire people, as future adults, as leaders. They teach with enthusiasm. They make a positive impact. And I trust their knowledge and their teaching and their guidance. Our world is expanding, stretching, and growing as it should be. And it should be because progress is real. Over the years, I've seen our district teachers uh, grow, stretch, and expand with them. Our kids are no longer just pawns to shove curriculum into. School isn't just about reading, writing, and arithmetic anymore. Our students are more than test scores and per pupil expenditures. Our kids are people. They're whole people. Everyone is. And I've seen our district step up to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion as they should. This is what good rational people do. This is what our teachers are doing. This is what our district is doing. Um, and I want you to hear that because the vocal minority can drown out what's actually happening. And that's unfortunate because our district should be very proud of what it does and what it's accomplished, even when people are saying ugly things over and over again and showing who they really are. Thank you for your time and thank you for seeing what our kids really need. And I hope that you all continue fighting for our students. Thank you for coming. Are there any additional members of the public who wish to address the board? Seeing none, we'll proceed to item 8, approval of the consent agenda. 
there's no there's no report. Uh, item eight, approval of the consent agenda. Chair recognizes Director Kreutz. I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Director Kreutz moves to accept the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Director Sargent. Any questions? Is acceptance of the consent agenda as presented. Support right for the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion prevails and the consent agenda is accepted as presented. Item nine, report from the board chairperson. Uh, as a reminder, the senior citizen appreciation dinner will be held on May 18th at the high school. Correct? At the high school um, at 5.30, I believe. Um, and the May district budget meeting is on May 25th, 2023. Uh, I also understand that there was a great tour of the um, transportation building um, to discuss the, the pro propane initiatives that we're doing. Uh, I understand a number of board members were able to attend. I'd like to open the floor at this point if anybody wants to reflect on, on that tour. Director Marian. Um, the, the tour was of the setup, the whole thing was absolutely amazing to me that someone would make that kind of effort to recognize us for the foresight that our administration, uh, Mr. Brockman and Mr. Thibodeau and Mr. Gleason have had in getting us in line with propane buses. Uh, it's a shame that the media wasn't there to hear the very positive things that this district has done. Um, pit stop and the speakers that they had were phenomenal. They brought them in from far away to tell us about the new kind of propane that's being made, a biodegradable propane um, that doesn't pollute. So there's an awful lot of positive things going forward with this propane bus thing, and um, I'm very, very happy with what I saw, and I'm glad that I went. Thank you. Director Silvestri. Yeah, I was there. I learned a lot about propane. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, I learned that um, they're starting to take plastics out of the ocean, and one of the byproducts of trying to turn them back into plastic is propane. And the propane industry is like, hey, renewable propane. So I thought that was really cool. Um, making propane out of plants, they have these little seedlings, and the seed pods could make propane when done I don't know how they do it but it was really cool and I took home some of the plants because I wanted to see what they look like but yeah it was really interesting um the people who who make the buses were there so we learned a lot about the buses as well and safety features of them which was really neat to hear about how the buses are very safe with the propane because that was a concern and um just very informative. Um, yeah, I wish more people could have come to that, but um, in a lovely time, beautiful flowers set up very nicely. Great, thank you. Director Sargent. Just one takeaway I had was uh, the studies that have been done by the bus companies and by uh, transportation where the students arrive better because the buses are much quieter, they're much smoother. They start up quickly in the morning, uh, in cold weather, they heat up well, um, and just how clean they are. Uh, it's, it's a real difference from a diesel engine. You don't have that rumble and the smoke, and very nice. So, And we did learn a lot, and I apologize because I have two pages of notes which I Are there any uh, additional questions for my report? Seeing Director Kreutz. Uh, for the district budget meeting, I don't think you said, but that will be at the high school and then gymnasium. That's, that's correct. Thank you. District budget meeting at May 25th at the high school gymnasium. At 5.30? 6, 6 o'clock. All right. Uh, item 10, report from the superintendent of schools. The chair recognizes the superintendent. At the risk of confusing myself, I will change my order and start with the propane event. Um, as has already been discussed, it, it, I, it, I didn't um, recognize how big of a deal this really was until I kind of got there and took it all in myself. I, I knew we were doing good things with propane. I knew that Sam Marie and Adam Thibodeau had put a lot of energy into coordinating this event, along with Amy Carlson from 
Stone Road Energy. I knew Pit Stop Fuels has been a you know, a partner that we've been working with for years, um, but um, they really wanted to celebrate us because the Bon Eagle School District has the largest bus refueling station for propane in the state, and I think it might even be in the east, northeast. Um, there aren't places who have um, sort of gone all in in the way we have, and I, I joked because I was asked to speak, and I um, they, they gave me a lot of credit for this, which I, I joked I'd be happy to bask in that credit, but it wasn't me, right? This, there was a lot of foresight by, I, I think, Bill Brockman, particularly, you know, previous superintendents, um, you know, Penna, uh, particularly in, in going all in in the propane bus uh, world. And th the things that um, Director Sargent was saying about, um, you know, the, the, the cleaner burning, the, the not having to plug the bus in, to your house. The drivers take the bus home. They don't have to have an extension cord coming out of their house to keep the block warm or the, the cloud of black smoke, the, the particles that get put in the air through deep burning diesel that can uh, irritate asthma, um, you know, have negative impacts on our kids. That, that piece about the calmer ride and apparently that has been studied that propane buses allow for a better entry into school, which was pretty fascinating. And there were folks from literally all over the country involved in the propane world that came to recognize this and be part of this. So it really uh, is something our district can be proud of, and it is something that we already were continuing with. I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I think two-thirds of our fleet is currently propane, and those that aren't, there's particular reasons usually why we're not um, running propane in those buses, and I think our goal is to eventually get all the buses on to propane, and, and one of the current limitations are the range, right? You can go a long way on a propane bus, but you can't just fill up anywhere. But I found out that we kind of can, that there are places that will re refill a propane bus if you call ahead. Um, and uh, apparently U-Haul happens to be like one of the largest um, providers of propane in the country, but people don't, they're not just typically open to the public. But if we were taking a trip to Bangor or to Holton, we could find a route that would allow us to refuel with propane. So whatever reliance we still have on diesel is probably on its way out. So congratulations to anyone who's involved in that. It was a, a big event. And again, Pit Stop um, Fuels has, has been a great partner, and they were a, a host of this, or a sponsor of this, I should say. So, And the, uh, the, it allowed me to see the inside of the new warehouse, which I kind of joked I'd like to keep it empty for like a conference center. It was actually really nice in there. It was a beautiful day in the open air, and it just it's industrial, but it just looks really nice and clean in there. And I know they have a, we have a lot of stuff to store in there, but... Uh, and I'm sure the fire marshal wouldn't really want us having lots of conferences in there, but it, it really is a nice um, project that our facilities department can be really proud of coordinating. So that's the first item. Um, we've had a lot of um, awards, really. Um, I'll start with our spring math meet winners. So this is an event at the elementary school. Uh, students in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade participate in the spring math meet, and I'll just go through the winners. If you aren't familiar with it, um, students sign up to do math on a Saturday morning, um, and that in itself is a pretty big deal for kids to choose to do this when they could do a hundred other things. And they, um, it's not meant to be a super competitive environment, but there are some competitive kids there who want to do their best, and there are awards that are given for first, second, and third place in each category, and then overall winners are named at the different grade levels, and then an overall meet winner is named. So the first category is team problem solving. And the winner's first place in team problem solving was Joseph Doucette, uh, Charles Pinot, Bristol Johnson, Miles Musseau, sorry, I butchered that name, and Sophia Liang. Uh, second place, so if you get the same score, that's how you get all those first place winners. They all got like 17 points or 22 points or whatever the, the mark was. So they don't break the tie. They award everybody who gets that same score that place. So second place, Isabella Bradway, Isabella Dodge, Stella Evans, Lily Hinshaw, and Emma LaRose. And third place in team problem solving, Silas Coyle, Declan Cox, Avon Cox, Deborah No, and Kinsley Parker. Um, and in arithmetic, our first place winners in fourth grade. So I did this out of order, I guess. I'm reading from the list, but team problem solving, I should have mentioned, they are, there are a variety of grade levels and schools that are all, they sit at different tables, and sometimes the proctors will sort of group kids to make sure everybody has a team, uh, but you'll have a variety of grade levels and schools working on those team problem solving. So those are varied teams 
um, from all across the district. But in arithmetic, the fourth grade winners, first, first uh, place, Drake Hamilton from Buxton Center, second place, Marshall Merrill from Buxton Center, third place, James Valancourt, Georgie Jack, Thomas Robert Shaw, H.B. Emery, Grady Phelps, H.B. Emery, and Jack Jones, Buxton Center. The fifth grade arithmetic winners, first place, Chase Cushman, H.B. Emery, Joey Goff, Buxton Center, Emma LaRose, Buxton Center, second place, Matthew Finney, Buxton Center, and Emily Inman, Buxton Center, and then third place, Maris Lopresti from Buxton Center. And then in sixth grade, first place only was awarded to Silas Coyle and Joseph Doucette. Um, the problem solving category, fourth grade winners, we had first place, Marshall Merrill, Buxton Center, Jack Jones, Buxton Center. Second place, James Valancourt, Georgie Jack, Stella Evans, Georgie Jack, and Drake Hamilton, Buxton Center as well as Sophia Liang, Buxton Center, and Thomas Robert Shaw, H.B. Emory. Third place winner is Hank Wilds from H.B. Emory. The fifth grade problem solving winners, first place, Charles Pinot, Buxton Center. Second place, Jacob Barnes from Buxton Center. Third place, Chase Cushman, H.B. Emory. Evan Hall, Buxton Center. Emma LaRose, Buxton Center. Dustin Paul, Georgie Jack. And in sixth grade, the problem solving winners were First place, Silas Coyle, and second place, Joseph Doucette. In geometry, this is the final category, uh, fourth grade winners, first place, Jack Jones, Buxton Center. Second place, Stella Evans, Georgie Jack. Third place, Marshall Merrill, Buxton Center. Fifth grade winners, first place, Joel Warren, Georgie Jack. Second place, Matthew Finney, Buxton Center. Third place, Emma LaRose, Buxton Center. And in sixth grade, first place, Silas Coyle. Second place, Joseph Doucette in geometry. So those categories are all tallied up for overall grade level winners. The fourth grade overall winner was Jack Jones from Buxton Center. The fifth grade overall winner was Emma LaRose from Buxton Center. And the sixth grade overall winner was Silas Coyle from Bonnie Eagle Middle School. And the overall math meet winner for the spring, and there's a plaque that kids' names get engraved on and it travels to their school while they're the reigning champion, uh, is Silas Coyle from Bonnie Eagle Middle School in sixth grade. So congratulations to all those participants, and even for the kids who don't win or don't place, um, there is usually a snack and the pride and honor of coming to do math on a Saturday morning. Um, we also had, um, we have a high school student, Keith Faulkner, who has participated in the Maine State Math Meet uh, back in April, and in regional math meets, uh, there were five meets in Southern Maine, the, the Pine Cone South meets. Um, so in the state competition, he tied for 7th of all 11th graders in the state and received a medallion, and he came in 4th for all 11th graders after regional meets in southern Maine. So that's also a pretty big accomplishment. So congratulations to all of our math uh, competition participants. Um, other big news this week, which this past week was teacher appreciation or staff appreciation. We, we like to acknowledge all of our staff during that time. Um, but one of the things that the state of Maine does uh, during that time is honor the county teachers of the year, and we were um, lucky enough to have one of our teachers named the York County Teacher of the Year. So Lisa Tripp, Bonnie Eagle Middle School sixth grade science teacher, is the 2023 uh, York County Teacher of the Year. She teaches science. She was nominated by Melissa Fries, a parent of a former student. Um, so there is a lot of press releases out and a lot of pictures, so definitely check that out. But congratulations to Mrs. Tripp. And she um, is in the running for the Maine State Teacher of the Year. There is still a pretty arduous process that will play out this spring and through the summer and into the fall before they name, uh, I think they start by naming three finalists and then, uh, and then the, finally the Teacher of the Year. So congratulations to Mrs. Tripp and good luck moving forward. Also, uh, Bonnie Eagle High School math teacher Beth Hayden has been named one of only four finalists for the PAMPST Award. Uh, and I had this acronym somewhere Presidential Awards for Mathematics Thank and you. Science Teachers. Right here. That's exactly what it says on my paper. But thanks for jumping in and saving me. I appreciate that. Um, so, yes. So, uh, Maine can nominate up to three finalists for each content area. And Beth was the only one selected in math this year. So, she's accompanied by three science teachers for the 2023 state nominations. So, we wish her luck in the national selection process. So, congratulations to Beth. Um, I've talked about the propane event, um, and then we have some resignations. Um, Amanda Hayes, science teacher at Bonnie Eagle High School, will be resigning at the end of the school year. 
Peggy Leary, IEP coordinator at Bon Eagle Middle School, will be resigning at the end of the year, and Alexis Franklin, art teacher at HB Emory uh, and Edna Libby Schools, will be resigning at the end of the year. And I believe that is what I have. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, uh, Superintendent. I think some applause is in order for our two distinguished teachers who won um, those, those wonderful awards. So why don't we give them applause, even though they're not here. Thank you. Director Kreutz. Uh, just looking at the agenda, it looks like there was also um, high school music students attending uh, Allstate Music Festival. So. I'm just reading I, the agenda. I appreciate the help tonight because I apparently am off. I did not, I copied onto a separate paper and didn't grab that. So, yes, it is important that you be informed of this overnight field trip that you don't need to vote on, but you should be informed of that our Bonnie Eagle High School music students are attending the All State Music Festival Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That looks like that is this upcoming weekend at the University of Maine and Orono. And now that I may be done. We'll see. Are there any are there any questions, Dr. Silvestri? Not a question, but I did notice um, the following donations. We seem to have skipped that as well. Um, the donation from the Gorham Savings Bank for sponsoring the employee recognition event that was held on Wednesday, May third, um, and the thank you to Missouri Farms in Buxton for donating twenty perennials for HB Emory uh, Junior Memorial School garden beds. So I figured it would be nice to throw them out a shout out for their generosity. Thank you. Are there any further questions for the superintendent? All right, seeing none, item 11, the chair recognizes Director Kreutz. I move to authorize the board chairperson and the superintendent of schools to sign the certificate of employment of a superintendent of schools and file said certificate with the commissioner of Maine Department of Education in accordance with Title 20A MS MRSA Section 10515. Dr. Kreutz moves to authorize the chairman of the board and the superintendent to sign the certificate of employment of a superintendent of schools and further moves to file the same with the commissioner pursuant to statute. Is there a second? Thank you, Director Sargent. You're on top of things tonight. <laughs> All right, the pending question is the motion as stated. Is the board ready for the question? Dr. Kreutz. Just a quick clarification. I mean, I think I understand what this is, but just so we can be transparent, can we explain what this is? So annually, we have to certify that we have hired a superintendent of schools and to file that certification with the Department of Education in Augusta. Um, we have the superintendent's evaluation on the agenda tonight. This is separate from that evaluation. Um, it's just an annual, I think it's an annual requirement. Do you want to speak to it? Um, yes, I believe the superintendent is the only statute, the only employee required under statute. So this is part of the obligation to show the school district is truly, in fact, employing a superintendent. So it is required. Thank you. Board ready for the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails. The chairman and the superintendent are authorized to sign the certificate and to file the certificate with the commissioner. Item 12, policy committee report of May 1st, 2023. Chair recognizes Director Dakotas. Thank you. May 1st, we met. The meeting was called to order at 428. There was no public comment, and the minutes from the previous meeting were approved unanimously by the committee. There were several policies that were brought to the committee for their review this night. The first one is JLCD, which is titled Administration of Medication to the Students. The nurse, two nurses were present to um, discuss this with us. Um, they are requesting that 
the current policy be modified so that with parental permission, a standing order can be accepted from the school physician to provide a list of medications uh, to provide medications from a list that can be given during the day at school. And there, uh, it's a time-sensitive policy, um, but it comes tonight to you for first reading. The policy committee um, recommended that it be accepted. The next one is DBA, which is um, the Budget Advisory Committee. Um, this had been reviewed by the board, and then the changes uh, were sent to the Finance and Facilities Committee, who then sent it back to the Policy mm -hmm. Committee. Um, so it comes tonight that there were no, there was an extra comma. Uh, to be totally transparent, and the policy committee voted to forward this for a first reading to the board. There were no other changes made at our policy meeting. Um, then we looked at um, we looked at policies ACAB and GBGB, GB, and. Policy ACAB is titled Harassment and Sexual Harassment of School Employees, and GBGB GB is titled Workplace Bullying. So the committee um, was looking at these two policies in light of the um, situations that are occurring with the staff at this time, um, uh, somewhat following the discussions of the books and public comment from uh, teachers and staff at the board meetings. And we were trying to uh, see if the policies could be modified or if something could be added that would indicate the procedures that school employees can follow when these um, harassment or bullying episodes occur. Right. So there was a lot of discussion. Um, the two policies uh, address uh, harassment or bullying from within the school environment. Um, and the issue that we uh, brought to the policy committee had to do with external ind groups or individuals uh, harassing or bullying the teachers. So uh, what we uh, decided was that um, we would uh, ask the assistant superintendent volunteered to draft um, something that would be like a flow chart of steps that teachers might possibly go through when these situations occur. Sorry. Um, there is no current policy under MSMA, and uh, we also discussed the legal reality uh, for these situations. So that um, issue was forwarded to the meeting which we had tonight. Policy BBBAA is titled Student Representation on the School Board and Sub committees. Um, the uh, recommendations included uh, adding curriculum committee as one of the committees that the st uh, students can be on. Uh, we made the APA grammatical 
uh, changes um, and added uh, number 14 to the policy to state that student reps will be included in all emails except those which are confidential in nature. Um, the issue then was brought up as to whether um, student representatives can make or second motions because they can vote, but um, they do not have a formal vote with the policy. So um, we um, tabled this policy until the meeting of tonight so that um, research could be conducted with our legal counsel as to whether this can be done. And that was voted unanimously by the committee. I'm sorry, does that mean something? No. Thank you. Um, okay, the next policy that was brought forward was KE, uh, which is called the complaint policy. Um, there were several issues raised regarding our current policy and flowchart. Um, examples were brought from two uh, nearby districts that are almost identical to ours, but um, there were many, many questions raised uh, uh, about the policy uh, that included um, the role of the chair, the role of the policy committee, um, and the superintendent. Um, a different complaint form was uh, presented to the committee, um, but this uh, policy discussion was also tabled. Um, the meeting was short and we had a lot to do last time. So it was tabled and then picked up tonight at this meeting to uh, pursue our discussions and gather more information from other districts nearby. At JL uh, Wellness, um, we decided also to table this because of time. Um, this, uh, there were uh, some outdated links, updated language is needed, and uh, we are going to bring that to the next policy meeting because the uh, person who brought it forward to the committee was not present tonight at the policy me meeting. We closed the uh, adjourned the meeting at 5.30. Thank you for that report. Are there any questions for the policy committee? Seeing none, we'll proceed to item 13, policies for a second reading. Chair recognizes Director Dakotas. Thank you. So the, we have policies for first reading too, right? We have, okay, so BBAB, which is the school board self-evaluation and the BDD um, have not received any more input from the board, so I would uh, recommend that they be uh, passed as written. Director Cotis moves to approve policies presented at second reading. Is there a second? Director Sargent. Pending question is to approve policies presented at second reading. The board ready for the question. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails and the policies presented at second reading are approved. Item 14, Finance and Facilities Committee Report of May 10th, 2023. The Chair recognizes Director Sargent. Thank you. Uh, you all should have a handout tonight with the, the minutes of the May 10th meeting. Uh, we called it order at uh, 402. There were no public comments. Uh, we approved the previous minutes. Uh, Mr. Marin is abstained because he wasn't at the April meeting. And uh, our student rep, Riley McKinney, was excused. Um, we reviewed.
reviewed the payroll and the uh, financial reports, uh, no problems. Uh, you can click on the warrant summary if you'd like, of the top 25 expenditures. We discussed a couple of those items. Number five on the top 25 was a pass-through, and it was a grant. Number 19, Tom's Water Solution. Uh, this was also in the top 25, and it was paid through a grant that we approved last fall in October for $10,000, so there's, that's good for us because we're getting $10,000 for that water. Um, Don re re reviewed the financial reports for April, and it's in the report. You can click on it and look at it if you'd like to. Uh, the dashboard is included. Um, we, uh, that was about that. The only item that we're going to be close on is transportation, and I inquired about that. We settled with the union this year, and part of the settlement increase their pay and it was retroactive so when all is said and done we're going to be close but uh, Bill thinks that we would be all set. COVID funding update uh, we're looking good unfortunately that means we're getting towards the end of the COVID funds. Uh, the other thing is we've started the audit and that starts on uh, May 15th. Bill will be in to do it today and uh, we also had the focus on finance and sent out to the public. Then we got an update from uh, Adam Thibodeau on what he's done and what they're doing. Um, and I would suggest you read it because it's a lot of stuff there. And oh, I should bring this up. Director Marin asked why the school board meetings were no longer being broadcast on the Saco River television. And Mr. Gleason reported that there's been some technical difficulties. We were working on it. And he said Saco River television, that technology has met a couple of times to work through this. Uh, and currently they believe that it's a spectrum issue. But more to follow, we're trying to get that through so there will be. Did I miss anything from finance? The uh, Harriman meeting? Director Kreutz. Did, did you want to talk about the 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 Harriman meeting that we're having with the uh, long-term planning? No, I didn't. I wasn't at that. You were? I was, yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Marie and I both were. So we had given an update at the finance meeting that the uh, long-term planning is moving along. Um, and there's going to be... Um, community forums on June 1st and 14th and so for folks that are interested in learning more about so it's gonna be twofold learning more about what the long-term planning process is going to be and then also providing that feedback where it's very much community forum where we want to get the input from the community about where does the district see itself when it talks about um, facilities and um, you know what sort of what matches with the visions and the long-term desires of of what our community wants. There's also going to be a thought exchange that will be going out for that as well. But if people are interested in participating in person, June 1st and June 14th at the high school gymnasium. Thank you. Director Dakotas. Yeah, just a question. Um, what is Tom's water solution? It's on the, the superintendent. Oh. I believe the explanation was that that is, does not have anything to do with PFAS. Mm -hmm. That had to do more with other types of contaminants in water, like lead and other things, so that we, we got this um, money to be able to mitigate, help mitigate some of those other issues that still persist in most wells in Maine. Um, but it's, it's money to help offset those yeah. issues. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have. I was wondering uh, what the status was of the historical society lease. Um, I saw that on an agenda a few months ago, and I. Um, the 
we we haven't met again with the historical society they were scheduled to come to the most recent meeting but they postponed because they're still waiting for uh, advice from their legal counsel on the um, the lease the, the 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 crux of it is the how long of a term we can put in that agreement um, because they they want they need a longer term to be eligible for grants and too long of a term can become a problem for the interests of the district so that seems to be the main sticking point and we're getting um, legal counsel and they're getting their legal counsel and that slows things down when you get to that stage but that seems to be the biggest sticking point thank you any further questions for the finance committee director Silvestri um, Erica what time are those Harriman meetings on the first and the what was it the 13th uh, 14th 14th. I believe it was 6 p.m. Six, six to eight for both of them. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Marion. Yeah, at the high school gym. And that way it's air conditioned. Be publishing though, like putting out flyers to promote those very soon. Hopefully this week. Oh yeah. Excellent. Any additional questions? Item 15, executive session pursuant to one MRSA section 405-6A to discuss a personnel matter. The chair recognizes Director Kreutz. I move that we move into executive session. Director Kreutz moves to proceed to executive session pursuant to one MRSA section 405-6A to discuss a personnel matter. Is there a second? Director Sargent. If any question is to proceed to executive session. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative, none in the negative. Motion prevails. The board is in executive session.
The board will be in order. Chair will direct members' attentions to item 16. Chair recognizes Director Kreutz. I move to approve an unpaid leave of absence for a teacher at Hollis Elementary School for the 2023-2024 school year. Director Kreutz moves to approve an unpaid leave of absence for a teacher at Hollis Elementary School for the 2023-2024 school year. Is there a second? Director Welch. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails and the leave of absence, unpaid leave of absence is approved. Uh, Chair will direct members' attentions to item 18, approval of an unpaid leave of absence for a teacher at Harold B. Emory Jr. Memorial Elementary School for the 2023-2024 school year. Chair recognizes Director Kreutz. I move to approve of the unpaid leave of absence for a teacher at H.B. Emory Memorial. Dr. Royce moves to approve an unpaid leave of absence for a teacher at H.B. Emory Elementary School for the 2023-2024 school year. Director Marine with a second. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails and the unpaid leave of absence is approved. Item 19, executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA, section 405-6A to discuss a personnel matter. Chair recognizes Director Kreutz. No. I move to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 405-6A to discuss a personnel matter. Director Kreutz moves to proceed to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA, section 405-6A to discuss a personnel matter. Is there a second? Director Heath. Pending question is to proceed to executive session. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The motion prevails and the board will proceed to executive session.
you did. Okay. I'll sign this after. And we're we're proceeding with the finance meeting. I believe that was the final decision. Proceed with finance. On the, yeah, on, the on the fourteenth. Okay. The board will be in order. The chair will direct members' attentions to item twenty: upcoming board of directors meetings and workshops. On Monday, June fifth, twenty twenty-three, the policy committee will convene at 4.30 in the afternoon in the central office library. On the same day, the board of directors will convene at 6 o'clock in the afternoon in the central office conference room. On Monday, June 6, 2023, the curriculum committee will convene at 6 o'clock in the afternoon in the central office conference room. On Wednesday, June 14, 2023, the finance and facilities committee will convene at 4.30 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the central office conference room. On Tuesday, June 20th, the Board of Directors will convene at 4.30 in the afternoon in a special meeting. And on the same day, the Board of Directors will convene in a regular meeting at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and both in the Central Office Conference Room. Do any members wish to provide notice of further meetings? Item 21, adjournment. The Chair recognizes Director Kreutz. We move to adjourn. Director Kreutz moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Dr. Dakotas, thank you. Pending question is adjournment. Is the board ready for the question? All those in favor? All those opposed? Nine members voting in the affirmative and none in the negative. The board stands adjourned until Monday, June 5th, 2023, in honor and tribute to Donald Hecto.